Sim Speaker. Sometimes you find the news, and sometimes the news finds you. All stations can keep up. At a Dubai FM, we we'll not only give you news at the speed of nanosecond, but we we'll also break it down with up to date analysis, informed opinions, and distinct professionalism. That's why you love us. <laughs> at about 8 from FM, your go to station. It's midday. Good afternoon, I am Olubumi Obajemihi with Global News in the News. South Africa wreaks legal action over power crisis. Schools reopen in Malawi after deadly cholera outbreak. Ukraine calls for weapon supplies to defeat Russia. is the news. The International Monetary Fund has said about 15% of low-income countries already in debt distress. This is contained in a new report titled Confronting Fragmentation Where It Matters Most Trade, Debt and Climate Action. The IMF said an additional 45% of the population is further at high risk of debt distress. It said while well, Chad recently reached an agreement with its official and private creditors, Zambia was progressing toward a debt restructuring. South. South African opposition groups, uh, trade union and business owners have threatened to sue the government over the crippling blackouts in the country. They have given the government up to Friday to stabilize electricity supply or face legal action for failing to provide electricity. The groups have also written a demand letter to the Public Enterprises Minister, Pravin Gordon, and the Chief Executive of a state utility firm, Eskom, Andre de Ruter, over the same matter. Recently, the country has been having up to 10 hours of power cuts daily. The problem has prompted the president to cancel a trip to the World Economic Forum in Davo to hold meetings at home with business and labor leaders. Malawi government has reopened schools after deadly cholera that killed hundreds of people. Schools in the state, in the capital, Lilangwe and the commercial hub, Blantyre, had remained closed for at least two weeks after the Christmas holidays. Health Minister Kumbize Chiponda said schools now have access to safe water and improved sanitation facilities, which will go a long way in reducing infections reported in schools. Malawi is among 31 countries globally hardest hit by cholera. Searchers have deployed drones to search for two passengers still unaccounted for after Nepal's deadliest plane crash in 30 years. The plane crash claimed at least 70 people's lives. A police official in Pukhara, who is part of the rescue efforts, said difficult terrain and poor weather have been hampering rescue efforts. On Monday, two more bodies were found before the search was called off because of fading light. You are listening to Global News on 88 by 9 FM, Akure, transmitting from Lara Mocking after the break. Why Ukraine is asking the West to decide on sending military support. Details in the second part of the bulletin. Please join us again. Thanks for staying tuned. For news update and live streaming, visit our website www.adabai89.fm or download Adabai FM app on Google Play Store. You can be part of us on our social media platforms www.facebook.com forward slash Adabai FM 88.9 on Facebook, at Adabai 89 FM on Instagram, and Adabai FM TV on YouTube. You can provide us information via email, newsroom, at adabai89.fm.
Ukrainian government says Russia has launched more than 70 rockets targeting its territory in the past 24 hours. It said Russian forces shelled more than 15 settlements near the city of Bakhmut in the eastern Donetsk region, including the salt mining town of Solda. Ukrainian military analyst Ole Zandov said heavy fighting still continues in the two key sectors of Bakhmut and Abdivka. He said the country is in need of night vision equipment, as the Russian troops are active at night. Meanwhile, President Zelensky says the attack on Dnipro and Russia's attempts to gain the initiative in the war underscored the need for the West to speed up decision-making in supplying weapons. In the meantime, Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, has visited Russian troops involved in Ukraine. Sergei Shoigu lauded the servicemen who, he said, courageously performed tasks in the special military operation zone. He also presented state awards to the servicemen for their dedication and heroism. Polish President Andrzej Duda says he hopes some of Ukraine's allies, including Germany, will provide Kyiv tanks. Duda made this known at the World Economic Forum in Davo. Also, Lithuanian President Gitanas Noseda said he strongly believes Germany will provide Ukraine with Leopard tanks. Now to sports. Australian Open organizers have banned Russian and Belarusian flags from the Melbourne Park present during the tournament after a complaint from the Ukraine ambassador to the country. On Monday, the red, white and blue stripes of Russia were held up by fans during a first round clash between Ukraine's Katrina Bendel and Russia's Kamila Rahimova on day one. Ukraine's ambassador to Australia and New Zealand, Vasil Mirushneko, condemned the public display of the Russian flag during the game of the Ukrainian tennis player, Katerina Bendil, at the Australian Open. He called on Tennis Australia to enforce its neutral flag policy. In this statement, Tennis Australia said their initial policy was to allow fans to bring the flags as long as it did not create any disruptions. Still on sports, Britain's Andy Murray produced one of his best performances in recent years to hold off Italian 13th seed Matteo Berrettini and win a five-set thriller in the Australian Open first round. The 35-year-old Scott looked stunned after completing a 6-3, 6-3, 4-6, 6-7, 7-6 win on Rod Lava Arena. Murray had thought a hip surgery in 2019 would end his career. The three-time major champion plays Italian veteran Fabio Fagini or Australia's Thanasi Kokinasis in the second round on Thursday. Meanwhile, Nova Djokovic makes his eagerly anticipated return to the Australian Open on Tuesday. To end Global News, a recap of our top stories. South African opposition groups as well as business owners have threatened to take the government to court over the power problems in the country. They have given the government up to Friday to stabilize electricity supply or face legal action. We also told you that Malawi government has said schools can now reopen after deadly cholera that killed hundreds of people, schools in the capital, Lilongwe and the commercial hub, Blantyre, had remained closed for at least two weeks after the Christmas holidays. <music> Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky has again called on the West to speed up decision-making and supplying weapons. That's Global News as edited by Titi Lokwe Adegolu. I am Olubumi. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon.